uh, my name's Robin Lloyd, and I'm here with Jerome Lipani, and we have this uh, powerful collection of graphics made by uh, Sam Curson and Kata of Dragon Dance Theater. And um, they sent me this wonderful collection in the mail, and I was so impressed, I felt we should do make a sort of preview of it here on CCTV and, uh, and spread the publicity of it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it covers um, this fraught time we're in right now about Gaza. And uh, I think uh, Sam has, has, um, has created some really powerful images in this book about the, the history of Gaza that he has captured by linotype, I believe is what it's called, uh, his way of reproducing images. Yes. So, Sam, you see, we have this image up of the SOS, of U.S. Liberty, which is an image that commemorates your experience in 1967. We would, we would, uh, which is the beginning of your experience with the Gaza situation. Um, so we would love it if you would say some words about how you, what was your inspiration and, and how this ha happened for you and, and the follow-up that you've done all these years. Well, 1967, June. Um, I was aboard a ship in the Mediterranean. I was about 20 years old, incidentally, which is maybe about the age of the students that today are reflecting on what's going on in Gaza and demonstrating all the way from UVM to Southern California. So I'm glad to see that, very glad to see that and think that in those days, 1967, when I was 20, we were more naive. We didn't realize, perhaps, what was going on. I give an example of that. We were in the Sixth Fleet. And that is a group of ships that were, in a sense, dominating the Eastern Mediterranean. One of our ships was a spy ship called the USS Liberty very sensitive devices, technological devices that were said to be able to listen to every kind of electronic communication that was occurring in Israel, Lebanon, and Egypt simultaneously in a multitude of languages. The young men on that ship were linguists they spoke Arabic and Hebrew and English and goodness knows other languages too, European languages. So they were listening to everything, including the communications of the military agents that were running that war on the land in Israel. The ship was attacked suddenly. First, it was attacked by napalm dropped from jets that passed overhead. The attack went on for two hours. It wasn't a particularly well-armed ship. It was a listening ship. Uh, finally, it was attacked with torpedoes from high-speed boats that approached and fired torpedoes at the midship, which hit the midship of the USS Liberty. A number of sailors were killed. Maybe 27 US sailors were killed in that incident and perhaps a hundred were wounded. Um, I know that because my ship had the fleet hospital and those sailors were brought directly to the ship I was on called the USS America. And I had the task of carrying those sailors or one of them or two of them up the stairs into the hospital. So I know this occurred. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yes. And um, so at first, the Israelis denied that they, well, they were the ones who actually bombed the Liberty. And, and right. then they admitted it. And then the U.S. forgave them and said, OK, it was just a mistake. Well, that was kind of what I was going to say about the naivete of uh, who was naive after all. I always thought it was me. 
But it seems like the commanders of the Sixth Fleet didn't realize who had attacked them either. That no one, the perpetrator of the, attra of the attack brightly said, no, it's not us. And everyone believed them for hours, maybe even longer than that. Maybe they kept saying it wasn't them for quite a long time. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah. And it was really dangerous to attack the Sixth Fleet with aircraft and torpedo boats and not know who they were. On yeah. my ship, we launched atomic weapons on jet planes into the air in anticipation of who it might be. Oh, yes. Anyway, well, so this is a story that very few people really understand, and it's a, it's a story that's kind of been submerged uh, in yeah, history. I, yeah. yeah, it's kind well, of, a, you know, a kind of undercover uh, tale, it's uh, true. Yeah. But so, so anyway, I was kind of prepared in 2008 and 2009 when the uh, incident, which the Israelis called uh, cast lead began to occur, which was called by the Gazans, the, uh, the, the assault on Gaza, the massacre of Gaza. And it started around Hanukkah and in 2008, and it went through January of 2009, and we watched it quite closely on the internet, and we saw many of the incidents actually occur. Um, like Sippy Livni saying, there is no human rights crisis in Gaza. We actually saw that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I made an image of it, which you can see in the book there. And a number of other images, like at the Al Quds Hospital, the tank attack on the Al Quds Hospital. We saw that too. All right, so then we had a collection of images. Then a few months later, the Goldstone Report came out. And that was a UN study that had been done by sending investigators to Gaza and calling on witnesses and listening to their testimonies and then organizing the whole thing. Well, when the UN report came out, then we could see actually the incidents that we had imaged back in 2008 and 2009 uh, detailed with the participants in those events speaking about what actually had happened to them and what were the consequences. <clears throat> so in order to make the book, then we combined those witness reports, those testimonies with the images, which we already had. Wow. Yes. Very powerful. Thank you. So, uh, so Kata, we would love to hear from you since this has been such a marvelous collaboration between both of you, you're printing the images that the linoleum block prints that Sam has carved. Um, so we would love to hear something of, of your collaboration together. Okay, the um, process of, uh, of so realizing the images goes from Sam who um, imagines the image, composes, and then engraves them into the matrix of the linoleum. So he carves, he engraves in a linoleum block, and then he brings those images to our printmaking workshop, where we have an, a press. This is a, it's a collaboration between Sam and I, but also it's a, uh, it's a, a joining of technologies of very old fashioned from the, <laughs> the way they used to make books, uh, way of, in early books um, it, with the old presses. And then, um, so that's how I make the images. Once Sam brings the linoleum block, I ink it I put a paper on the block, on the block that inked, and then it must be um, pushed through the press with a specific pressure that will, uh, once it's passed through the press under pressure, what comes out is uh, the result is the paper with the image that the the the, the transposition. The transfer of the ink onto the paper is the image that we see. Mm -hmm. So there, once we have that image printed, we take a photo of it. 
once it's decided it's the final image, there's proofing goes on, but once it's the final image, we take a photo and then we digitize that. And, and then that's what you end up seeing in the book is the final digitized, uh -huh. formatted, process, uh, processed image of the artwork. And we, and we so, love this image that Sam made of both of you actually in the printing process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, thank you so much uh, for, for explaining all that. And now uh, for our audience, we want to show you more of the images of this book. And uh, we will uh, read some of the text as we go along. And we'll start from... And these are texts that we want to make sure the audience understands that they're from the UN Human Rights Council, they're from the UN Security Council meetings, they're from Wikipedia, they are from Veterans for Peace, mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of other sources mm -hmm. that, that you have managed to find. Okay, so the first image that we'll be showing you is from um, these three men who ran for office, ran for seats in the contested Palestinian election of 2006 on the platform of change and reform, uh, which, which is, is Hamas. Hamas. Yeah, one of them, his name is Ishmael Haiya, has continued to be a leader of Hamas and is a member of the negotiating team to end the war this, this year. He is currently on the negotiating team. However, Three of his sons and other family members were assassinated by a targeted bomb on their car in Gaza at the end of Ramadan in April of this year, 2024. This seems to me such a cruel obstacle to put in the place of reconciliation. So, so the book the books, uh, quotes from Wikipedia uh, concerning that election, the National Democratic Institute, in partnership with the Carter Center, reported a professional and impartial performance of election officials. The Bush administration accepted the outcome of the Palestinian legislative elections and praised the Palestinian Authority for holding free and fair elections. Okay, next image, I think, no? Uh, the, the Central uh, Elections Committee released the final results in January 29, 2006, and announced that change and reform, or Hamas, uh, had won 74 of the 132 seats, while Fatah trailed with 45. So, that shows that Hamas was duly elected uh, legitimately, and, and at first that was, that was actually recognized by the U.S. government. And from David Rose's article in Vanity Fair, we, ha we have this. After failing to anticipate Hamas's victory over Fatah in the 2006 election, the author reveals how President Bush, Condoleezza Rice, and Deputy National Security Advisor Elliot Abrams back an armed force under Fatah strongman Mohammed Dalan, which touched off a bloody civil war in Gaza, leaving and ended up leaving Hamas stronger than ever. So. Yes, all right, thank you. So um, we skip over that one right now because we're into the fishing image, we will repair that later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay um, so I'm now reading from the text of the book for this uh, compelling image of a fisherman with the uh, military uh, behind the net. And the story here is um, fishing has always been a significant component of the Palestinian economy. Shoals Shoals of sardines and tuna, as well as shrimp and squid, are plentiful in the eastern Mediterranean and have provided Palestine's fishermen with livelihoods for centuries. But now the Israeli Navy used violence against fishermen. 
they are attacked with live fire when they cross the unmarked nautical boundaries arbitrarily imposed by Israel. The violence against Gaza's fishermen forces them to choose between their personal safety and earning a living. And here we have an image of UNWA, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine, uh, which was accused by Israel, of part, members of which were accused by Israel of participating in the October 7th attack on Israel, although no evidence has yet been uh, provided. Uh, many, many countries withdrew their financial support, including the U.S., which gave uh, 344 million in support of Palestinian refugees in 2022. But UNRWA has been a target of Israel since its existence. From, from the text of from the Human Rights Council of UN 2009, we see that uh, the, in the image that Sam has made here, that uh, from, from the year 2007, as soon as Hamas was, uh, was elected, uh, Israel denied Gaza food, water, medicine, supplies, and sanitation. So the blockade that we have been experiencing now in Gaza has really, be really began in 2007. The next image that we are showing is who is the terrorist? Oh, okay. Yes, and uh, let me read from the text for that image. The scale of destruction and war crimes in Gaza would not be possible without a continued flow of weapons from the United States. Despite massive public protests, the Biden administration has convinced Congress to give Israel over $14 billion to buy more weapons. This is on top of the $3.8 billion the U.S. already gives to the Israeli military annually. Israel is required to use this money to buy U.S.-made weapons. So the money goes and the money comes back and weapons are transferred. This is a form of corporate welfare, not only for the largest weapons manufacturers like Lockheed Martin, RTX, which is Raytheon, Boeing, and General Dynamics, which have seen their stock prices skyrocket, but also for companies that are not part of the weapons industry, such as Caterpillar, Ford, and Toyota. So here's one of the really tortured images uh, that Sam has made of Gaza that show, shows his, the amazing passion uh, and the, the deep emotional uh, experience that he has in relation to the suffering of the people of Palestine. And here's another one, Gaza 09, um, uh, uh, showing the, the, the carrying of a child or a wounded person. So our last images here are Stop the Bombing. Um, and um, the text that faces this image from 2012 that Sam made, um, and, and it shows the Cabot July 4th uh, event for Vermont Veterans for Peace. Uh, there's a quotation that you have used in the book from Vermont Veterans for Peace, which is, only a political process will dismantle the apartheid system, answer the grievances of the Palestinian people, create a democratic system that provides rights for all the people of Israel and Palestine, and finally bring lasting security and peace. Without that political process, the, the, the cycle of violence will magnify, dooming more generations of Israelis and Palestinians. 
Now we present uh, the end card. Uh, this book, it, Gaza, Punishing the Innocent, was created by Dragon Dance Theater, published by Fomite Press of Burlington, Vermont, and can be ordered through our Amazon. Great. Well, thank you. And thank you, Sam and Kata, for creating this uh, very important document. And we hope we will, uh, that many people will see it and will buy the book. We hope that many people will be able to see many more of the citations that you have made so that they have an understanding of the history of the present conflict. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thank you. All success to the students and peace, peace in the Middle East. Peace, peace in the Middle East. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.